Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. I'm back, baby! <laughs> back to finally doing movie reviews again after a long struggling months throughout the summer and fall. So that's why I haven't been doing any recorded videos for a while. Since we're now in October, which is almost gonna be November, yes, I'm late in the game on this one because Halloween month uh, is almost over. We're getting ready for Halloween for sure. So I decided to review this most overhyped, it got a lot of attention since January, or I think maybe it just came out. I think when they saw the trailer, it probably happened uh, during 2022. So that was last year. Well, this is yet another formalic uh, killer doll movie called Megan. Yes, and it's basically the child's play of a new generation as we speak. And I'm going to show you exactly what this creepy doll looks like. Yep, there it is. Megan. <laughs> Which is spelled in capital uh, with the number three between the M and the G. Which stands for Model Free Genderative android uh, a childlike uh, female robots that's that just came from this uh, manufacturer company that's about to cheer up this young girl who just lost her parents from a car crash and hoping this could be used as a teacher a protector a family member and a best friend yeah, this Megan, <laughs> it looks like one of those old 70s Blythe dolls or any other kind that they're so creepy looking, trying to become more realistic than ever. It's totally frightening. Yep, that's her living doll that's going to take over humanity as we speak. <laughs> wow. Since we're now living in a generation that's so dumbed down that now everybody has to focus on, you know, futuristic sci-fi thrillers for real, you know, with George Orwell's uh, 1984 novel, you know, focusing on the future of, of all the rules that were never meant to be broken. And then we have to go for Islak's uh, Osmanov's uh, rules of, of AI or basically robotic technology for that matter. And of course, you know, we get a, a lot of sci-fi thrillers around and, and dramas and all that. Yeah, with Brave New World and then, and then we get uh, the Terminator, you know, where androids like cyborgs are about to take over uh, thanks to Skynet and that develops a war between them and the humans. Yeah, the human race. And after this popularity of Megan, that's been talked about, you know, throughout January all the way to today, you know, since we're now in October, I mean, it also led to the fact that now we had to deal with AI being taken over by storm for, for the entire entertainment industry, you know, which is movies, music, uh, TV, and sports, you name it, all run by um, generated AI technology where all you know, humanoids are, are going to, to cause a lot of humans to lose their jobs and they're gonna end up homeless and they're not gonna have anything that they're gonna go for unless maybe there might be a solution to fix this problem. It's it's such a scary world out there, and now we're trying to do what we can to fight back the system. And that's why there were strikes going around throughout the summer with SAG and ATRA, uh, and then WGA uh, with AM, uh, PTP, you name it, before they decided to have a tentative agreement and so on and so forth that was going around. It's just, 
insane. I mean, I can't believe this has been going on somehow. And they're trying to fight back so that way we'll have humans like us to continue acting, directing, you know, working behind the scenes with the entire crew and you know, getting paid more to take care for their families around because of the high cost of living in America as well as worldwide and and so on and, and the fact that you know this is happening you know with all the homeless people hanging around in, in the streets you know they're hoping they'll they'll find a miracle to fix this problem because it just keeps getting worse and worse I mean especially with streaming taking over and every and computers are being upgraded and and all this other stuff that's happening with technology is just taking a turn for the worse. And for everyone too, they're, thanks to social media, you know, taking more hate than love away from us. And I just hate that. I know, and it sucks too. Anyway, that's how depressing it's becoming. But with that aside, um, when I heard about this movie, because of all the hype it's been getting, there's a lot of TikTok videos about it, uh, a lot of movie reviews around surrounding it, and all the entertainment news and the trailers, uh, TV spots, all of that coming around, and especially throughout this particular January month, while movies like Avatar, The Way of Water, as well as... Um, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever are becoming a huge, huge hits at the box office. Sorry, my eyes are hurting so bad. Um, somehow this is just turning into yet another generic killer doubt movie that we've been getting for the past couple years. And that sucks too. You know, with movies like... Uh, with movies like Annabelle... Uh, the Boy, and even the the 2019 Child's Play remake, and all of them suck. I mean, because we were getting killer dollar, uh, we were getting all these killer doll films ever since um, from the past. You know, there were so many of them, but Child's Play was the most common one of them all. That was the most popular of the entire killer doll series here of its uh, horror genre, you know, with Chucky being possessed uh, by voodoo magic from a serial killer and going on the loose and now he's going around killing again as an immortal. Yeah. Played by Brad Dorf, of course. But like I said, I mean, before Child's Play, there was, of course, magic with Anthony Hopkins and Anne Margaret and then there's a movie called Dows and then there's Puppet Masters films that we had and so on and so forth and I know that I think there were some earlier ones too but then we have films like Dead Silence uh, with the Petrilochus dummy um, I guess there was a little bit of that in the movie Joey um, but that was uh, <laughs> that was uh, a, a sci-fi sci psychological filler in the tradition of poltergeist but yeah i mean annabelle um the character was as we speak the doubt that was in um the conjuring uh that james wan who's the producer of this movie had produced so that was going on and that led to yeah the boy and then all these other ones but curiosity takes the best out of me because i was expecting to hate this movie but it turns out, in a deeply shock manner, I was very surprised. And I actually enjoyed it so much that I couldn't believe it myself. It's crazy. Because, um, believe it or not, um, with James Ron producing it and Jason Blum producing it as well, they got Akila Cooper to join with James Wan to write the story. And they got Gerard Johnstone, who just did um, a horror film called Housebound and 
this comedy sitcom series, The Jackie Brown Diaries, hopefully not to be confused with the Quentin Tarantino film. Yeah, he's a New Zealand screenwriter and director. I think we have something there that this might turn out to be finally something that we can look up to, even if it's just another generic killer Dow movie that we've seen so many times already. This actually might have more subtlety and story development than ever before, only done in a female's perspective in a way, but but it could be any other. Um, plus you also got uh, Allison Williams from Get Out and Peter Pan Live from NBC to join in. So she's a very talented actress, so you can't go wrong. It's just, I was expecting to see something that's more clunky and awkward, odd, uh, cringy, which is a word I'm getting tired of these days, but you, you get the idea. Um, and all of that that's that's thrown in into the film, and that's just, ugh, just weird. Um, but yes, it did have the campish tone right there. And the fact that you're probably being creeped out by the look of Megan right there, because it does look like those 70s Blythe dolls or any other kind and you just want to stay away. Being traumatized for life or scarred for life. <laughs> okay. Anyway, the movie stars Allison Williams once again. Yeah, Violet McGraw, who of course was in Ready Player One, uh, which is an awesome movie from 2018 that's based on the best-selling novel by Ernest Klein. Yep. Amy Donald, uh, who provides the motion capture movements, you know, with the body languages and the head movements here and there, side to side, all these acrobatic dance moves that's well choreographed for sure, and all of that um, in mind. And it's being voiced by Jana Davis, who sounds more like one of those. Uh, female voice actresses uh, from all these Japanese anime done in English dub, which looks and sounds exactly like what a little girl would have been like. So that's incredible. I'm not so sure if she has done voice acting for anime, but nevertheless. Uh, Brian Jordan Alvarez, uh, who was in um, who was in Will and Grace and Jan the Virgin. Uh, Ronnie Chen, uh, who was from uh, the, who was from the the TV show, yeah, currently as a senior correspondent on Comedy Central's The Daily Show with Trevor Howard, replacing uh, John Stewart, yeah, and he has a sitcom Ronnie Chen, international student. Uh, Jen Ben Epps, Stephanie Gamnu Monten. Uh, Lori Dungay, who is from, uh, believe it or not, she actually performed the art festival during the Commonwealth Games in 1990. It's uh, amazing. Uh, Amy Usherwood, Jack Cassidy, Michael uh, Sasante, Samson Chan Boone, Kura Josephson, uh, Renee Lyons, and Arlo Green. It's written by Akila Cooper, who of course wrote Hellfest and Malignant, uh, along with James Wan. And it's directed by Gerard uh, Johnstone. And yeah, forgive me for leaving the air conditioner on, but I want to keep this entire room cool and clear. I want to be able to stay focused so I don't drain my energy, I don't get tired. And I want it to become as charismatic as possible for this entire video. Since I'm recording this on my iPhone and I had to leave the lamp on to make this whole thing more brighter than ever. <laughs> so you get the idea. <laughs> for sure. Anyway, the movie begins where we meet a young eight-year-old girl named Caddy, played by Violet McGraw, whose parents have been horrifically killed in a car accident during a violent snowstorm somewhere around Oregon while they were on a family trip. 
Yeah, she was playing with the Android game straight out of her tablet that controls this rather peculiar Furby-like creature uh, Android toy that she had for a while until disaster hits. Um, she's being sent to the hospital with several injuries and including her forehead with with brutally cuts and brute with all from the glass and all that. She was now being fully recovered for about a couple days and she's being sent by her legal guardian, her aunt, Gemma, played by Allison Williams, who happens to be a roboticist at the high-tech toy manufacturer company in Seattle, Washington, called Fun Guy, which happens to be the company that developed and manufactured all these high-tech gadgets. And that includes the one that she had, which I gotta admit, this was very satirical right there. They actually show the ad before the movie began. And I'm thinking to myself, I thought it was a streaming ad if I was watching this on Prime Video or any other, because I know Prime Video does have some ads before it. But this was like after the logos that showed up. <laughs> so that was crazy. Um, pretty odd here. But no, it just happened just before the movie even started with the story. Anyway, uh, the company is being run by an Asian CEO uh, male named David, played by Ronnie Chin, along with his assistant, American, named Kurt, played by Stephanie Gamiro Montaigne, you know, which he basically checks to see all the files and all this other stuff to make sure everything's all set and clear. While Jenna is probably using the company's resources to create this one child-sized humanoid robotic DAO powered by AI, artificial intelligence, of course, for short. And this particular creepy DAO in the style of those Blythe dolls is not other than Megan, which stands for Model Free Generative Android, played by Army Donald and Jenna Davis. So Gemma is joined in with her colleagues, Cole and Tess, played by Brian Jordan Alvarez and Jan Van Epps, to fully development and Tests out Megan in their lab to see how well it performs, but totally unsuccessful when Steve finds out and discovers the project that lead to a very disgruntled attitude of his because Gemma is about to continue to work on it, but somehow discontinues it because. She should be focusing on working, working on all these technical gadgets that's in a slight competition with another tech, technical company that's stealing their ideas to focus on. So that's why David wanted to shut this whole thing down and focus on that instead. Meanwhile, Gemma and Caddy were struggling to connect with each other while she just took her to her home to stay um, but she doesn't have any toys nor books around for her to uh, play or read all these stories and everything because it's all you know run by technology you know she does have a smartphone she can download an app to read a story and she also has mostly collectibles that she got from eBay or something uh, mostly because that's just part of her uh, childhood stuff and that kind of lets this <laughs> this entire um, smart and energetic uh, Mrs. Fixer Upper <laughs> for sure you know to fix all the parts and develop all these um, AIs and and motion capture robots around and any other technical gadgets laying around in their um, 
work in a workshop uh, inside the basement of her house. She also have her next door neighbor that turns out to be a grouch, a Karen-like type um, named Cecilia, played by Lori Dunkey, who actually has a vicious dog named Dewey, who goes around creating some chaos by you know going straight to the fence, you know, scaring everyone around the entire neighborhood, and also. Um, spreading around um, insecticides all the way around that's going straight to her driveway. And Gemma is about to uh, pull charges against her for, for pestering her and, and scaring everyone around. Yeah, telling, uh, telling the owner to keep the dog inside the leash and inside the home and put her somewhere so they don't go around getting brutally attack yeah anyway uh well while Gemma was watching caddy uh with bruce the motion capture robot that's being under control by power gloves and all that stuff um that's where Gemma became so motivated to complete megan the dowel so that way this prototype will be able to be formally paired with Caddy, so they'll have a connection with each other. And after that, Megan had became a perfect uh, child prodigy for, for Caddy to become, at this rate, a protector, a family member, a best friend, and a teacher, all in one. So Fiends had became starting to make her feel better for Caddy to just to get over the tragedy that's happening in her life. And also the fact that she now has a therapist, Lydia, who was played by uh, Amy Usherwood to actually help her out. You know, trying to get over that, the situation. And through that habits that's been going around, um, Especially, you know, during this one specific test inside um, Fungi's uh, headquarters, um, inside this room that looks exactly like a classroom, uh, you begin to see Caddy uh, sitting on the table, who somehow somehow gets connected with Megan, where she ends up drawing pictures, playing games, have a total effect connection with each other and she does sing she has this very cute voice right there <laughs> does sound like an actual little girl but her expressions is very creepy in a mild-mannered way that that at that alone can develop a lot of uh, concerning of which joins in with Tess and Cole and Lydia about Caddy's uh, developing into an unhealthy emotional attachment. And since then, Megan has started to become, started to operate more independently and targets everything that deems a threat to Caddy's. And this is what led to this whole thing that happened. Uh, during this one day, you know, while she was playing outside, you know, playing and in the end, you know, shooting arrows. Uh, suddenly, uh, Megan went outside, tried to pick up this arrow until she was being attacked by Dewey. And Caddy was about to stop this dog until she got attacked straight in her arm. And she was being sent to the house to recover. And Gemma got so frustrated and, and so angry at Cecilia for letting the dog out and all that and then she just had enough till the next night Megan actually kills Dewey and this is where it becomes a violent behavior for Megan for sure and then later um, Gemma was trying to tell um, Cecilia uh, try to tell Caddy 
if it's okay to talk about everything that you need to know, and if you don't want to do any of the stuff or any of the testing or all of that, then that's up to her. Because later on, I mean, Dave was so surprised by the ability of Megan that he was going to show this to the entire public, the entire uh, crew, to watch this by storm, this presentation where both uh, Caddy and Megan are together, which led to this this dark secret where, yes, she begins to collect all the secrets um, in her memory by heart. And that's where she talks about what, he, what she remembers about her parents and how she remembers uh, that uh, her, that she accidentally put a cockroach uh, on her uh, sandwich uh, bag, you know, her lunch bag and suddenly uh, her mom screams and you know, just, you know, just to play a joke on her. And, but nevertheless, you know, she doesn't remember anything that happened, so that will be safe. And, and just to calm her down too, and hoping this entire, the entire, um, the entire team will be able to be able to prepare for their next uh, event that's going to happen. So once they sell these dowels throughout the entire market, and that's what they're planning on, you know, to green. For, for fun guys and besters to to green light uh, Megan's release. But things seems to get much worse because later on, the other day, Gemma and uh, Caddy had went to go out camping and you know, trying to get to know all the kids around and also she wanted her to go to school, but she felt like, you know, who needs that when you, when you have Megan? And because because already Megan's taken over uh, Caddy's uh, habits around that that she needs to start to learn and understand the connections here that you don't need to bring Megan around you know for conversations and all that stuff even if you love this doll so much so at that rate because. She begins to find out something suspicious going around with this Dell because you notice that some of the files uh, have been corrupted, including the video files, especially after the murder of this this young boy who was an asshole. Um, forgive me for saying that. Um, who eventually was about to attack Cad uh, Caddy. Um, and then at this rate, Megan showed up. I mean, at first, uh, Gemma was going to leave her in the car, but Caddy doesn't want to because they're trying to see if they can fix some of the diagnosis tests and all that to make sure everything's well improved for the presentation. But here's a big dark side of, of this uh, rather disturbing scene. It was somewhere in the woods, um, just when, just when Megan showed up, um, and ends up uh, trying to save Caddy from this, the stupid boy, she ends up attacking that boy, and the boy, of course, is uh, named Brendan, played by Jack Cassidy, um, by ripping his ear off. I'm not kidding. I mean, entirely ripping his ear off while she was explaining to this young boy about, you know what happens when boys like you become so mean, you're gonna end up becoming a, a total uh, butt wife for the rest of your life. And you're gonna get what you deserve. And that's what he did. And then later she chases him around throughout the woods and yes, and there's this awkward scene where she ends up running around like an animal. Uh, I'm, it's, it's so insane, I couldn't believe it. Until he got run over by a car and was killed. Worst comes to worst, though, after 
what Gemma's been finding out, uh, what's happening. Um, Megan uh, fatally uh, killed um, killed Cecilia after she blamed uh, Gemma for Dewey's disappearance uh, with insecticide. And yeah, she's already killed. Both of them are all in body bags. And now, um, yes, that's where Gemma got suspicious by seeing all these files that have been so corrupt. And that's when Megan eventually becomes totally insane. Saying all these horrible words, um, going, uh, trying to push uh, Gemma's buttons right away. That got to the point where, you know, there's something suspiciously wrong with Megan. So she ends up taking a pen, just look at it, and and then just, you know, shut her off and decided to take her straight, straight to the lab to see if they could fix this problem. And just getting prepared for the, the presentation of the release of Megan for the entire public to see that they're gonna be excited for it. But things became even much worse was when suddenly uh, Cole and Test um, we're in the lab and they're trying to, to find out what's going on. You know, why is all the, why is the lap, the, the desktop and everything was shut off uh, while they're hanging um, Megan on top, you know, taking out all the, the tubes away from her that could be controlled. And now suddenly she ends up in control, already on, and wants up, um, uh, once up hanging the coal around and yeah he got caught in this one particular rope and he was choking the deaf yeah he almost died and then later megan eventually escapes and just just turn on the uh yeah yeah turn on the um yeah um yeah, she turns on uh, the flammable chemicals uh, causing um, an explosion in the lab. I mean, luckily both Cole and, and Tess had lived, especially Cole who's been hanging. And then she eventually staged a, mur a murder-suicide, which Megan eventually performs a dance move, very awkward dance move, uh, to David and ends up killing him by stabbing him straight into uh with a blade yeah stabbing with a blade and and killing his assistant kurt in the elevator slashing his neck so if you're seeing this in in the um, the unrated version you'll know a lot of blood is is spreading around and then megan is about to to go after uh, Gemma and caddy which that's where you know, Megan and Kat and Gemma were were in the battle with each other. You know, already taking over as Caddy's sole parent. And Gemma attempts to stop Megan by damaging and disfiguring her in the process. But Megan ultimately overpowers her for sure until Caddy saves the day by or night. <laughs> by actually controlling Bruce and stopping uh, Megan, even though, yes, Megan was already being, you know, sliced inside the, uh, inside the basement, you know, with the, you know, with the, the chainsaw and all of this other, well, she actually has the, the hammer, you know, about to slam um, Gemma's leg and, and hits her head and you know, blood was on her nose and then finally <laughs> caddy eventually stops her for sure until she's about to be attacked they already you know cut uh, megan in half and then finally because now she found out the, the truth um eventually 
you know, both Gemma and Caddy just stop Megan and just damage her entire face and her head too uh, with a <laughs> with a screwdriver. So now Megan is finally dead, and now they're both safe, but they're probably getting ready to go to the hospital um, as the cops and and the ambulance had arrived on scene. Yeah, and the movie was over. Yeah, sorry for the dead giveaway, but I just wanted to have fun explaining it. Um, but yeah, this movie was really something else, and I, I just couldn't believe how insane and creative this film turned out to be. Uh, I was, ex but again, you know, it was a surprise for me. It could have been worse, but it was not. And I really loved how how campish it really felt too, and how the oddity it went for the for the blend of horror and humor. Uh, through this movie, and it's nice to see that you know it's doing it was doing so well when it came out, and now they're going to develop a sequel uh, called Megan 2.0 uh, sometime in 2025. So let's see how this one will turn out. It probably end up being the next child's play for the next generation. <laughs> yeah, uh, but needless to say, the performances are just right on cue terrific although it's i did have some trouble with ronnie chan's performance as david i mean because i know he does have uh, some broken english around not to offend him or anything but it's just sometimes it's kind of hard to handle uh his acting ability for sure and and kurt kind of feels a little you know, pretty odd too for the assistant, especially when he, he was going around um, pushing, trying to find a way to get even with his boss, the way he was treating him. And I also began to find out um, Gemma's pirate files of Megan. That's um, straightforward that he decided to transfer straight to you know, his files for sure on his external hard drive. Uh, now, uh, as for the deaths in the film, yes, um, some of them were rather brutal, uh, especially the ripping of the ear, um, even the scene with the, with the insecticides being sprayed on her face, uh, for Cecil Cecilia, though, and, um, and then all this other, um, other disturbance that really went through it um but there was only a few kills so there was a little bit of blood and gore but not as much i mean unless you're watching the unrated cut um i had to say it was pretty revolting to see you know almost animal cruelty to that dog but luckily um that dog was died off screen so we don't but we did saw the dog being grabbed by Megan after she pulled a, uh, you know, a doggy treat uh, on the ground. Um, but as for the for the other performances, uh, Allison Williams uh, is just incredible and terrific for this role as a roboticist. I mean, yes, yeah, she's she's a techno geek herself. Uh, and you could definitely see that because she mostly focused on something that's high tech. You know, that's what she loves to do. I mean, that was her passion. You know, she loves robots, um, but it's kind of hard for her to to take care of her niece, uh, Caddy, because you know she's focusing on her work. But she thought maybe it was great to have a playmate for her to. To learn and understand the problem is is that she kind of learns it way too much that this is where she's going to become a brat at this point well until she learns her lesson um and violet mcgraw um is very great and as a child caddy so um it's based you know just like all the other childs that we've seen 
in movies like this. I mean, she really uh, developed fully in, in her performance here. But as for Megan, though, uh, with the performances of Amy Donald and Jenna Davis, I mean, it was right on cue the way um, <laughs> the way Megan moves around while developing a very sadistic um, kills that she performs, and also the way she speaks, even though she's trying to, you know, trying to protect her from from harm. Yeah, and all the rest of the the other guys too, and gals, you know, they're all great too. I mean, you really want to hate Cecilia so much because of the way her attitude is and the way she's treating Gemma. I mean, she got what she deserved. And of course, Brendan is a jerk. He got what he deserved, but nevertheless. Oh, um, but yeah, the writing was just very special. Um, a lot of subtlety in there and a lot of fascinating uh, discoveries here. Um, definitely blends around with comedy, so it started to become more satirical, but it also becomes uh, more violent than ever before, especially the fact that this was given a PG-14 rating, which I think that was the big downside. It should have been R-rated, and maybe they could have put a few more scenes to, to continue with it, though. But it is on a tight budget. It was $12 million, but it's already making like $181 million worldwide. This was a surprising hit. And I can see why people, especially on Halloween, they want to dress up like Megan. Well, for girls, that is. So this is really uh, very special, but very creepy. Oh boy. Watch out. Because Megan's probably going to go after you if you don't be nice to her. <laughs> okay. So anyway, that's Megan, and I give the movie... Uh, four and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.